you see how I'm kicking up? Yeah. And it has a little bit of wiggle room at the top. Yeah. There should be no wiggle. It should be uh, all contraction and then stop. Okay. okay. So it's gotten better since then. That was like one of my first leg sessions that uh, he had programmed for me. But um, just like like you can just see you're controlling it down. You're not just letting it sling down and you're driving it through. But when you're not kicking it, you're contracting your quads to move the weight. And you'll notice you can't use near as much weight. It's like that's actually one of my clients. And he could barely, he like bam, was Bambi leg because, and he had to take <laughs> it down to like 50 pounds on the stack just to do it right. No and I was kidding. Like, but think about, you, you know, you're getting humbled, but think about you progressing this same exact strategy until you get to the strength that you were doing shitty strategy. Mm-hmm. Your, your muscles going to be so much better and you're probably going to feel a lot better. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Blood, Sweat, and Gear with coaches Skip Hill, Andrew Berry, myself, Scott McNally, and we are hanging out with, you might know him as Justin Wyatt on Instagram. Justin Abbott is joining us just before Nationals. We just literally met today. When I say met, I mean we talked on Instagram for the first time today. Um, But you've talked to him a bunch, Andrew. Dude, this guy's got an incredible physique, man. So I'm excited to to talk shop, talk about the prep, and, and just learn a little bit more about you and your training. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, no problem, man. I, like I said, I enjoy watching y'all's podcast every every time it comes out. I uh, just either listen to it on my uh, uh, on my headphones, or I watch it while I'm eating, you know, a meal or something like that. So I don't miss any on blood, sweat, and gear. It's just bodybuilding, drugs, and stuff, all of it. Heck yeah, man! That means a lot to us. That does, man, to have somebody of Which your caliber. Which one is your favorite, Justin? Which one is your favorite? I'll, I'll be honest. It was probably it was this one before. Um, it's just bodybuilding just because more information because I'm a young coach coming up and anytime I can learn something, especially from people that have been doing it longer than I have um, and people that are, you know, putting people on stage with um, that's representable, that looks good. You know, you can tell like you can always tell if like, uh, you know, it's Barry's person on stage or Scott's person on stage or Skip's person on stage or just like you can tell with, like Chris Total, you know, yeah. like, or Don or Don Kadome or. A right. cement factory. You can always just tell, like, their guys. Like, oh, that's you know their guys. So, like, I like listening and learning from you know experienced people that have you know what they're putting out as a byproduct is awesome to see. And it's you know it's how you know how bodybuilding should be. So, but I love one thing, and I told Scott this today is uh, Ron's just straight bodybuilding history knowledge. It's yeah, just man. crazy because that's that's my question was one of the questions that got picked and that's why like I reposted it or whatever is like what was the best nationals you've ever seen and who was in it that made it you know that nationals it was like Flex Wheeler um Ronnie was Gunter and all the Ronnie yeah it's like the craziest yeah. national lineup they all were pros at that time they should have been you know and then yeah. you only got one yeah. pro card so Lavroni like was in Ron, there Chris Cormier Ron was like Ron seventh Ron. in that show which is crazy yeah which is just you know? nuts yeah you mm-hmm. know? That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, you look pretty crazy yourself, man. Uh, Andrew pulled a few pictures together for us to bring up here. Man, that's that dude. You've got some freaking density. You've got some round yeah. shape to you, man. Yeah, there's a great shot on you, too. Yeah, that's the that's kind of the deal that we've been trying to uh, gather. Like I did USA's last year and and I did the Arkansas like a week before. And um if I think well, if we could have put what was on the Arkansas stage on the USA stage, because my body just like just wanted to run away from us, and I could never get that fullness back like I did the Arkansas. It's mm-hmm. something that we really had to to really work on. Conditioning's never been really a problem. Uh, my coach Tyler Woosley, me and him were kind of like, I would say the definition of like conditioning snobs. Like like I'm <laughs> I've been ready for like at least three to four weeks. That was two weeks ago. Okay, um, and so like I'm in like a weird position where like I'm always wanting to be progressing in some way. Like I want to push down <laughs> further just to get you know maybe one more glute striation or maybe just a little bit deeper glute striation. But we're at the point where my body will just like completely just take off and we will never be able to feel back out. And I know that mm-hmm. Andrews had problems with that before, and, and I'm sure all of y'all have had that with clients. And so it's like. I'm in a weird position where, because I'm like, like I said, I'm always a person that wants to be trying to progress. So I'm like, I'm not trying to get any leaner and we're trying to hold this look and then, but I'm not trying to grow. So it's like in a weird spot. 
that's almost the worst spot to be in because as bodybuilders especially in prep you want to feel like you're going somewhere whether yes, it's okay yes. i need to fill out or oh i need to get tighter but like i mean you did the work and it's kind of you did the work early and you, you went and won the yeah. arkansas and then you got this stretch in between it's kind of hard what are you and ty doing right now are you feeding up a little bit like are you pulling back on your cardio if you had to do any like tell us a little bit about that <laughs> So I'm a person that has to eat a lot of food regardless. Like in the off season, I'm, I, I can show you my diet and a lot of people wouldn't believe that's what I was eating every single day. Um, so, and if a lot of people, I can tell them what I'm eating now and they're like, oh, you should feel great. And it's like, well, when you're this, a lot of people understand it's not really the food. It's it's the body fat percentage that you're at. And I am, mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you, not cocky or nothing like that, but I'm peeled. Like I can show you pictures that I took this morning and you're like, you could swipe a credit card, put your hands in my hamstrings, whatever you want to do with my hamstrings right now, and especially the glutes, but those glutes always stay in. But what we're doing right now is we have a number and we don't want to go into that number. If we get to that number or maybe a two pounds from that number, we feed up. And when okay. I say feed up, my high, my high days are like 1,000, 1,200 grams carbs. And to be honest with you, the last like week and a half, two weeks since that show – baseline days are like around 600 so like i tell people that and they're like oh you should be fine like you should feel great but like i said it's not really the food -wise. they've never been in shape um, before yeah they've never been in true yeah, contest yeah, exactly. conditions and had to hold it people just say that they just don't know the other thing they're not they don't they might not know about you is your training you know your training's hard and intense yeah. lots yeah. of quality volume lots of quality intensity i mean i watched some of your yeah. leg press sets that go on for like two and a half three minutes or something. oh I hell yeah I've seen those. i mean they, they go on like yeah. whether it's a drop set or but you know, he's got two or three training partners around and one of them, I don't know if it's your girlfriend or wife or there's a female in there and they're all screaming at you. And it's an intense, yeah. intense process for sure. Yeah. And I think that's where the conditioning comes from and being able to still eat that much food. It's not really being able to, it's, it's having to, cause it's, it's supplying that, that type of output has to have a bigger input. Um, but anyways, like, like I said, we're just, we're, we're at, we're, we're as far as we want to go completely which like i said for bodybuilders it kind of sucks you want to be pushing down and especially how i am i'm like when i'm trying to get shredded like that's all i care about it's just what i can do to get a little bit more peeled but um like i said if we get to that number just feed up um and like i said basically all my training days for like the last week week and a half two weeks have all been just like significantly high days uh and then like a rest day i'm a big he probably would actually want me to do a high day on like rest days and i'm just not i'm not big on that i don't i'm you like prefer if I'm to put food, it food i can't just not train you know yeah, what i'm saying so you want to put it like, to use I, I like to go more to like a base day on like a rest day but most of my training days have been very high um which has kept energy uh not energy but kept performance in the gym high like i've still been able to progress a little bit and i actually uh i don't know if y'all saw this or not um Barry might have, um, where I actually just now gave my training to somebody. I gave it to Kuba oh. uh, from the UK. Hell yeah. So he's doing that. And he's he's kind of scaling me back a little bit right now. Of course, he's trying to freshen me up, uh, which is kind of weird because, like I said, my base days have gotten raised too. So those are higher. Um, and then when you're pulling back volume, it's kind of like, as a bodybuilder, you're like, I need to be doing more. I need to be doing more. But I think that's that's kind of the main reason I actually gave my training away because I've been working with Ty, um, Ty Woosley, uh, Prestige Physiques for probably close close to three to four years, and you know we've never lost a show except for like a national show in a place third and uh, third and fourth at the two national shows that we've done. So. Um, that's pretty much what we're doing cardio yeah we pulled cardio completely it's just steps now and it's really just trying to maintain the number the weight because really the look is it, the look is not what we're looking for right now of course um even with those high days i still wake up just as flat as i did the day before so it's like it's, the food's not really sticking super hard but we're just trying to keep that number and have a uh, we, we kind of tested like you saw how round i was at the oklahoma show um, we have a few tricks that we like to pull at the last week of the show um, and basically be able to volumize and fill out. And so he's not worried about filling out. And so because what we talked today and it's like there's, there's no problem. We're going to be able to fill out. We'll just, you know, we'll start a little earlier probably um, because that, like I said, the last couple of national shows that we've done, 
that's just kind of been the feedback. The first one we did was nationals in 21, and that was my first first national experience, and we placed top five. Nice. And it was just we just need more muscle. Um, but we we're always we're always in condition. It's just always about being bigger and fuller. And I think now we're finally at this last off season. We're finally at the spot where I have the muscle mass to actually be a pro. You know what I'm saying? Like I think if you took that picture that Scott just showed and you covered it up with your thumb, your my face, you would probably say that was a pro on stage. Oh yeah, um, yeah. There's no question, you, man. With, with so you didn't height. win because you're not very attractive. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the prettiest guy. I'm not the prettiest no, no, no. Guy, no. I'm, I'm teasing. I'm, not, I'm just messing yeah. with you. Yeah. <laughs> you were straight faced like this. This guy just said that. For real? Did you say I'm ugly? <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't worried about it. At all. I can take it. To it. it. <laughs> hey, tell us about um, your training. What, what 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 kind of philosophies do you are you guys using? I mean, I know Cuba and I know the way he trains. How how has that been? Um, it's actually been great because the biggest deal I've always done my own training. So my own training philosophy is it's very that's why I picked Kuba. It resonated the most with Kuba and how he trains. Um I like to pick exercises that I connect well with. Hard exercises, but I'm I not and then I I don't want to say this and say people stray away from this or that, but like I used to be able to barbell row four oh five, you know, for sets of ten. And I never had a back. Okay. And so, like, I really learned the fundamentals of the best exercise for me is the one that I can brace the most with yeah. and keep the constant tension in that muscle. So, it's a very Dorian-like principles, one to two hard sets and walk yeah. away. As okay. much as much weight as you possibly can for maybe like a six to ten set and then a back off to like a 12 to 15 that's kind of really how i approach like almost everything except for when i was doing legs like leg press for me getting under a leg press and doing six to eight reps made no sense like at all because what it feels like is everything just hurts it doesn't yeah, feel yep. like there's no muscle there's just all tendons and bones and it feels like you're just crushing stuff um and i kind of like got away from like barbell squatting because i just it just wasn't doing anything for me. And if I can get in a hack squat and control the rep down, slight pause in the hole and explode up and just build on that, get really strong in those rep ranges and get um, really strong with the same control. A lot of people uh, will think progressive overload is just always getting another rep or always getting a little bit more weight. If you're not controlling it the same way, it doesn't really matter what, uh, what you write down on paper. Um, so that's kind of those are my philosophies is just one or two hard sets especially or you know on major compounds like you know like a smith press or some kind of press that you're really trying to progress um and then like your heavy rows like a you know like a rogers single arm row yeah. i really went to a lot of single arm stuff for uh back training and it brought my back up like my back grew crazy over the last uh year the off season or so um and then uh like maybe like for like a lateral like a you know like your medial head or bicep or maybe tricep or something i might do like a three three sets you know a little bit moderate uh moderate weight higher reps just really making sure i'm connecting with them and then if i ever did like an arm day it'd be like bicep tricep superset as quick as i can for you know 45 minutes an hour or something like that is this a newer uh, back picture here, Andrew? Uh, you, Andrew grabbed a few shots. That's, I think that was from that's, last year's that's, that's from last, last year. year. Last year. Okay. Yeah. So backs come up from that. Freaking conditioning his nails in that shot, man. Yeah. yeah. He's always been peeled on stage. Let me ask you this, though. Do you even train your rear delts? Yeah. <laughs> Scott, already, Scott already mentioned that. Uh, so rear delts is something that people have like called me out. They try to call me out. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, you're using side injection, like especially when like um, bodybuilders without borders post me or something like that. There's always a comment or two about it. Um, and rear delts is something that I train, I think, differently than a lot of people. Um, I, I think I told Scott this earlier when I'm doing when I was doing my own training every shoulder day. Like, uh, so I have a I push pull legs, and so you have a chest dominant shoulder day, a shoulder dominant uh, no a chest dominant push day and a shoulder dominant push day and on shoulder dominant push day and always on back day i had rear delts but only did one exercise it's always 
chest supported rear delt dumbbell flies always but it okay. was always a five step rest pause for as heavy as I possibly could trying to get to 50 total reps before I progressed so 50 okay. total reps over that five step rest pause with 30 second break in between uh, each one of those little rest pause mini sets or whatever you want to call it and that's literally when people ask me what I do for rear delts that's all I've ever done or that's how I grew my rear delts was literally doing that and I'm talking about at in the all season, I got to where I was doing like 95s, and I was getting to like the 46, 47, almost the 50 rep range Good in those, over across those five sets. That's why. So I just trained them hard and heavy, and uh, upper back focus rows. Um, yeah. I actually like to set up a. Uh, it's on the the rogue belt squat, the one where you load the plates up and um, you pull from through the floor, and the plates mm-hmm. are on the back and they come up. Yep. I would set a bench into that. And then take just a normal like pull down bar, and that was my upper back row. So okay. You'll have a T bar, so basically like a T bar, pretty much. Mm-hmm. But we didn't have a T bar, so that's how I would set that up. And that one, I mean, that's gonna fry your rear delts too. Nice. Mm-hmm. I by the way, I grabbed you uh, your latest leg video from YouTube. So I figure when we're done talking about everything, I wanna mm-hmm. I wanna watch that with you guys, and we could maybe talk a little bit about more about your training there. So I got to tell you, we the reason we brought you on, Andrew and I were just chatting, uh, Skip, Andrew and I were chatting before we recorded, and I told Andrew that I met you, and I was like, yeah, I think you follow him too. And Andrew, you said, you said this this guy could possibly win this thing. Oh, uh, I mean, me, me and you know, everyone knows Nate Spear. Me and Nate, we're training partners. He lives right down the road from me. Uh, every day we've been talking about, oh, who's looking good for nationals because we're both going. We've got clients and stuff. And every single day, Justin's name pops up as definitely <laughs> – I mean, definitely like a contender for the supers. You know, it's rare that you have someone with the size and the kind of conditioning that Justin's going to bring, right. as he's already shown a couple of weeks ago. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it's and it's we all know that like a middleweight's never going to win. You know, the nationals. It's it's light heavies, heavies, supers, and yeah. I mean, I haven't seen a ton of talent in the light heavies and heavies. You know, hopefully, I'm not. You know. I'm not ignoring anybody, but we try to see, you know, Instagram and bodybuilders without borders and Sulos's page to check and see who's contenders. And I absolutely think, and I know Nate agrees that Justin could be a contender for this year. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll leave it at that. that. That's the goal. The goal is not to leave Dallas without, I want the overall, but definitely without the pro card for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. And like, and I don't expect Justin to that day. Huh? But, but I don't expect Justin to come out here and say like, oh, I'm going to win this thing. I no. know I'm going to, because, you know, like anyone that does that, usually they get embarrassed. But like, you know, I think he's got the confidence with the right amount of humility and the right attack to this whole thing. He's in shape early. He's in the perfect situation that you want to be. Take note, people that are prepping. You want to be ready early. You want to be in this limbo situation where you're literally just looking at that scale, tracking your base and your food based off of what you look like and where that scale is moving and pulling your cardio, feeding up, all those things that you're doing. So I think you're just in that right position right now because your stress is going down. Yeah. Uh, the wear and tear on your body should be going down with the pulling of cardio, increasing the food. So, yeah, I think you're in a perfect position to peak exactly as you want to peak. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of tools left for the last week that can be played with. So that's why I think we're in a very good spot. And and I'm one of the guys that, like, my, my coach jokes is like, bro, I don't even know if we can spill you. Like, we, you know, like, it's, it's – <laughs> As hard as we push, it's like I don't know if like you'll ever wake up watery, which you know, knock on wood, something could happen. But it's one of those things. It was like I can eat twelve hundred grams of carbs and then wake up just as dry the next day with just a little more fullness, and you have to build on it, you know, stuff like that. So you know, knock on wood, everything goes as planned and goes my way, and I think it could be a good outcome for sure. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Hey, I'm looking Andrew, forward to watching. Anything you want to mention? Anything else? Any other questions you had before we check this video out? Uh, I did want to ask a little bit more about um, did your training train, did your approach to training train this year alone? Because I know we talked a little bit in the past, you know, through DMs and whatnot. Where did my light go? Sorry about that. My light just went off. <laughs> there we go. Um, did you? I know you talked a little bit about the back training, switching over to things you can brace on. But how about your legs? Did you were you doing squats and whatnot previously, or did you tell us a little bit more about that evolution too? So yeah, I was always the guy who was like, I will never do a leg day that I don't squat. Like I'm, yeah. I'm gonna go squat. Like there's no question about it. You know, and I've. You can go. I don't know if there's many videos. They're probably way far down. I'll tell you what. I've while you're talking about this, I'm going to bring your leg training up. So continue chatting. 
and I'm going to get okay. this rolling, all right? Well, I, I've had videos in the past where I, it happened like in 2020, like when the COVID came up, um, when I had to try gym. Well, the powerlifting gym, I mean, you know what you got in a powerlifting gym. You got a squat rack. And luckily, I was able to talk them into buying, you know, a leg extension, leg curl, leg press. But there was no hack squat. There was, no, you know, nothing like no pendulums. So if you're going to train legs, you're going to squat. And I got up to where I was squatting. I have a video on there where I squat like seven plates for like 10 reps. It's seven plates aside for like 10 reps. And, but it just got to where in the time that I was at that powerlifting gym to where it just, I, I was just getting more hurt than it was anything. I wasn't really getting a whole lot out of it. Yeah, my legs grew and stuff like that, but my low, my upper body was just like, did never grew from that. So it was more of like a trans, it was kind of a slower transition. It wasn't like, oh, just stop squatting, but like, you know, little injuries happen, like lower back happens or hips are so tight, you can't squat or something like that. And I just kind of like just got away from it and was like, I guess I'm done barbell squatting because I have a hack, a pendulum, a leg press. I learned how to really, you know, get the most out of um, like, leg presses and stuff like that or I, I think my first transition was from barbell to like a smith squat mm -hmm. and then it got to where i was like i can brace better with a hack and then it got to where i was like man i love the pendulum because you see somebody walk over the pendulum and they slap one or two plates on and they get completely buried under the pendulum because we had the the original paramount pendulum so yeah, i like yeah, to where i didn't have to load up as much weight and stuff like that and um, that was just my progression into that, and I noticed that I could just get more out of my actual quads than just being a more overall type of builder, um, like a squat would be. And it, like, I don't have the lower back issues I've had, and my knees are a lot. But knock on wood, somehow I, I don't know if it's just because I switched over to training like coop like with Kuba's intent. Kuba's intent, if anybody doesn't know, it's we're very the same on the actual exercise selection and the reps and sets and stuff like that. But he's so focused on different portions of the rep, like on a leg extension, it's a two second hold at the top or two second hold in the short and however you want to say it. Yeah. Um and like or like the pendulum, it's actually rever it's a, not a reverse band pendulum, it's actual regular band pendulum, which makes it even harder than a normal pendulum even is. But it's like a three second count going down, one second pause in the hole, explode up. Or like on seated leg curl, it's pause at the top, pause at the bottom, pause at the top, pause at the bottom. So you're controlling the weight. And I've had to use a little less weight when I switched over, but just I've been able to progress almost to normal weights that I was using before, but with much better control. And I think just joint integrity overall has just been able to hold up better. Um, cause I can hack squat without like crying, you know, <laughs> and like, you know, pendulum squat without like, you know, to my knees, like I can barely walk out. Like, when I say I can barely walk out of the gym, I was being for real. Like I could barely walk out of the gym, um, on those yeah. days. Like I was doing, you know, prehab, rehab, all that kind of stuff. And now I can go in like, and I have still have, like, everybody talks about the lame day anxiety, but it's more like. I got to beat these numbers, not like I have anxiety. Like, am I even going to make it through this leg workout because my knees are going to be hurting so bad? So stuff yeah. like that. So tell us a little bit about the workout here. This, I, I see you uploaded this about what, three weeks ago now? Yeah, this is the, what Kuba calls the hamstring dominant leg day is not hamstring. I mean, it's literally, you know, one heavy set, six to eight with, of an RDL, but it starts out with adductors, two sets, yeah. Pretty self explanatory. Work up, up to a heavy set of uh, stiff legs, one all out set, that's all, move on. And then single leg leg curls, which I've never been like a single leg leg curl guy, but he won't, if we had a standing, he would want standing. Okay. Um, but literally, that's all the hamstring work in that session. So um, it's not really a hamstring dominant <laughs> session. Then you got two sets of um, uh, leg extensions. And the way you do them, it's just, it literally just completely fries them. It's like slow down, you're controlling it the whole time, and the slight pause in the hole. And then you don't just like, a lot of people you'll see just kick it out. You literally contract through the pad to the top. And you don't want any like wiggle room at the top. And then you pause it for two seconds and come down, and those will kill you. And then mm. two sets of pendulum, and then one set of leg press. That's literally it, except for you would do calves at the end. And, uh, 
but that's what he would call his hip hinge slash hamstring dominant leg day. But it's and a lot of times I would you know I, I would be like, why am I only doing one set of stiff legs? I'm always a two three setters, you know for sure. But after that one set, if you do it right and like you got a slight pause at the bottom and then you know really explode through. Well, the heavy six to eight set, like that's that's getting up there. Like I was doing five and a half plates right there for yeah. like eight or so. So it's just, I would say I it probably kicked in at the right time. Hmm? I would say the change of your training, you know, by pulling a little bit of volume out, probably kicked in at the exact right time where you needed it to, uh, it you know, manage fatigue and manage body stress because, you know going the way you're going and trying to hold this condition and hold this size and this fullness for another month after you made this video, that's hard to do, you know, with, with what you're doing yeah. without some yeah. kind of break. So I think just pulling back, I, I think he, he read the situation really well there. Is there anything special you're doing with this extension here? Um, I'm strapped in. If you're not using a seatbelt, you ah. click it or kick it. But um, <laughs> so you see me going slow, slow down. Yeah. And then you can track up. This was so – He's really big, like, so I send him videos and my progression and whatever I did in that session. And, of course, he gives me feedback, and he was busting my ass about this because I'm. you see how I'm kicking up? Yeah. And it has a little bit of wiggle room at the top? There yeah. There should be no wiggle. It should be uh, all contraction and then stop. Okay. okay. So it's gotten better since then. That was, like, one of my first leg sessions that uh, he had programmed for me, but – um just like like you can just see you're controlling it down you're not just letting it sling down and you're driving it through but when you're not kicking it you're contracting your quads to move the weight and you'll notice you can't use near as much weight it's like that's actually one of my clients and he could barely he like bam was bambi leg because and he had to take <laughs> it down to like 50 pounds on the stack just to do it right no and I was kidding like, but think about you, you know you're getting humbled but think about you progressing this same exact strategy until you get to the strength that you were doing shitty strategy. Mm-hmm. Your, your muscles are going to be so much better, and you're probably going to feel a lot better. Oh, yeah. Looks like here's the pendulum you were talking about. Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Skip. I, I just I pay attention to um, things that most people don't pay attention to. It looks like based on the soles of those shoes being Vibram, those are Merrill Vapor Gloves, right? Uh, they're like a cheap off brand on you on um off of Amazon, but yeah, okay. they're like a flat oh, sole. Okay, fair enough. I, I the reason I ask is because I I will not train legs um, unless I'm wearing. I have several pair of vapor gloves from Merrill, and they yeah. have the Vibram sole for that reason yeah. because they are flat and the grip is just incredible, and they look identical. I keep looking at them, going, I think those are vapor gloves. <laughs> No kidding. Yeah, they're called some like some weird like foreign name. Okay, gotcha. Okay, like a team Blue special. Principle. Yeah, same principle. And you are right about that Paramount. There is not a heavier pendulum made. And shit, that machine right there. There, it's. I mean, I remember it in the early two thousands. We would sit our bags underneath it because no one ever used it, and then we'd go over to the hack squad. <laughs> and then to see that become such a an effective movement i have to laugh and go why did why did i not take a closer look at this piece years ago before yeah. the before everybody figured out how good this this machine was i yeah. told you about how the What's corporate gym i worked is, in that's like, that's did i tell you guys about the how the uh, the the corporate gym i worked in had this exact same piece and i used it like every single leg day and then one day i go in there and it's gone and i'm like yo what'd you do with with the paramount and he's like oh i stole it for scrap scrap metal because no oh, one God. likes to use it because oh, it's too hard <laughs> yeah and i'm like bro like i would have bought that thing off you guys and, and rented a yeah. trailer or something to put that that's crazy yes. to me. yeah because i actually um if you watch my day in the life i actually helped run a equipment business Okay. Um, it's called Gym Fitness Superstore. So, like, those right there, I mean, I have so many people trying to get those right now, and you, you can't find those. We've had probably, yep. you know, a handful of them, but you can't find those. And what's funny about that, what's ironic about that exact pendulum, is that's the first pendulum I ever used when I did my very first show um, at this little rinky-dink. It's called 20, Hardcore 24. It dude never took care of any of the equipment. All the equipment was always broke. <laughs> But that's yeah. why I like to train because it was grimy. They had 150 dumbbells. They had this. They 
you know, all the bars were bent and everything like that. But I remember that. And that's what I called the hum. I didn't know anything about it. I just called the humbler because it was so hard. And mm-hmm. we finally ended up getting it in the gym that I train at now. We were able to pick it up. Nice. Yeah. I saw one and on that's Facebook. That's a hard one to break. There's one on they Facebook Marketplace for 500 bucks, and it disappeared Whoa, within Shop minutes. Like yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't I'm have sure. room in my home gym, so... Yeah, they take up quite a bit of quite a bit of space too, for sure. Yeah. So yeah. remind me, how many sets did you say you're doing here on this? Uh, two sets of the pendulum. Okay, and you're working up to that. So how many how many warm ups does that usually take to get up to uh, your, your actual work? Once long, once I'm done with leg extensions, this is gonna be my first compound. I may do two or three, but that last one was a working set. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, you'll know when it's a working set, like a like a like a warm-up set or whatever filler set it was only like two or three reps for me yeah you know? no i could see the way you were pausing at the, at the end to try to try to al- you know, almost get one more you know and i see yeah, you're using I'm, the band I'm there too that. i'm cool with taking like a, a you know a couple of deep breaths and then going again a, yeah. a lot of people call those widow makers i just call that a normal set yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every look at, look at the variations and the when he when he stands up look right there yeah yeah you can see the right down the right down through the middle of the hamstring even you threw out a you said you guys were trying to not go below a certain weight where have you been sitting at lately right at the 250 mark all right right on right on <laughs> It's That's a big awesome. dude. And how tall are you? Yeah, I, I, I try not to say it. I try not to oh. say it because it's just a number. Yeah. Um, I just want I just want the finished package on stage to to show the number. You know, like yeah. I want somebody yeah. to be like, oh, he looks two sixty, two seventy. Right. You know? Right. Which. That's huge for me because honestly, um, my first nationals when I did with Nate, I actually had to eat and drink into the supers. Yeah, I because that. I was playing the conditioning game. Oh, okay. I actually woke up that I woke up that morning to go for weigh ins at like two twenty or something like that, and I had to eat and drink into it. And then honestly, USA's last year, I could have been a heavyweight if okay. I just would have waited until um, if I were to try to drop some water somehow with some diuretics or maybe use a sauna or something. I was like, yeah. like two two thirty when I woke up the day of weigh ins, and I could have made uh, heavies. But I just, I just like, you know, a lot of people don't come in super shredded as supers. And so I try to play that to my advantage. That's a brutal yeah. set right there, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is just like, this is just a uh, calf press. Nothing, nothing. Su- okay. Too Did you do the it. calf press in between the uh, pendulum and the, and the leg press? No, the guy didn't video the leg press. Oh, but, but, okay. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, he, do you ever, messed, you guys ever do this? But, but do you guys ever do this where, like, you know, you have two really hard compounds back to back, so you might put something a little bit easier in between there to kind of catch your breath and get your second wind in a sense? No, nah, just you say no, nah, just go right for it. <laughs> no, nah, I just want to, I want to get it over with because, like, you know that, I, and I've been telling people this, especially now this deep, like my last leg day, it's just going in. You're like, man, I don't have the energy to do this, but like, I'm gonna bust my ass as hard as I can to do this, and I'm gonna get everything yeah. out of it. And once you're done with it. Like once you're done with your final set of that hard set, you're just like, it's like a sigh of relief. Like you literally yeah. conquer the world. You feel like you know that big serotonin dump and you know whatever. So uh, well, it's like I, I just want to get it over with. No, no matter what you have to do for the rest of the workout, it's just it's it's almost like warm up. It's easy after that. Yeah, I, I could do calves anytime. Yeah. You know. So yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now, you came from power. You're from Arkansas. Right? Good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, from Come Arkansas, on. right? Yes, sir. Yeah, when you're done training, do you put a rubber cope mm-hmm. in? No. You I, might not have run, I might have run that together too fast. I apologize. When you're finished with your training session, because you're from Arkansas, do you put a rubber uh-huh. Copenhagen in? <laughs> no. Because I always I, I that wasn't in Arkansas, so. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. I, I knew that's what oh. you're talking about, but I, I can't do it. <laughs> uh, speaking, just to get back off up. the Arkansas thing, what's that? It makes me throw up. I, I can't. Oh, do fair it. enough. You're better off. You're to better off. Yeah. yeah, probably. Yeah, it's very addictive anyway. Yeah. But um, piggybacking off the Arkansas thing, you know, I've been around a long time. I'm an old head. Arkansas oh, you're gonna talk about all, uh, go ahead. Well, I'm just wondering because Arkansas doesn't typically kick out. It's it's not known for like you got to stand out like a sore thumb there, right? Yeah, so the thing about it, it's kind of cool, but it kind of is not because, like, 
there's not a real big so like take now dallas for instance so like that's my ultimate goal is to move to dallas like that's where i want to be at mm -hmm. but like around dallas that's that's bodybuilding central you know stuff like that you know down by mi40 sure. like you know there's bodybuilders just walking out there's people that don't even compete that are bigger than you walking down the street <laughs> um and around here it's kind of like everybody is almost skewed because they don't see you know like what i see backstage at national shows like when i walk backstage in my first national shows i was just like damn i'm out of place like this is this is nuts um the first person i remember seeing at a national show was uh vincent veroni or whatever with animal he was with animal uh for a oh, while vincenzo yeah yeah he was coached by matt at the time and that's the first time i saw it and that's so all i was just like that dude his arm is bigger than my leg you know he was like 290 like that, that year so, you guys oh my god yeah it was crazy but anyways so like yeah i stand out like a sore thumb and you know i'm very known um especially in the in the in the in the niche culture that's here yeah. and i'm known outside of it too but like it's not as as cool you know as it would be yeah. in like dallas or something like that but um yeah, it's just a different different environment around here, which you know, I'm not mad about or anything like that. It's just where right. I grew up. It's probably yeah. good for your training business, though, in terms of getting clients. Because if you're the guy that sticks out, everyone's like, hey, this guy knows how to put on muscle. He knows yep. how to compete. He knows how to get in shape. That's going to be my coach. Well, and and I, I kind of vibe with a certain type of person. Hmm. Um, the more like the serious person, like, you know, I'll have people come to me and like, you know, hey, you know, I want to turn pro in two years. And I'm like, maybe I'm not, the, I'm not really part of the guy for you because you probably won't. Cause I'll tell you straight up, like you'll, you probably would never turn pro. You can, but it's going to take a while. It's going to take more than two years or something like that. Or, you know, I'm a person that like, I'm a real no BS type of person. Cause like, I'll tell them straight up, like, how I treat this is, is this is my life. Every single decision that I make is geared to, has this in the background or has this geared towards, you know, bodybuilding, like literally every decision that I make. So like, I don't see an excuse to miss a meal. I don't see an excuse to miss your cardio. I don't see an excuse not to take a set to come absolute complete failure. Like I don't see those excuses. I don't have myself have those excuses. So I don't allow you to have those excuses and I'm holding you to the standard I hold myself. Yeah. So like, if you don't check in, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not running you down and stuff like that. But yes, as you did say, Barry, like it does help me be that person. There's a few others in the area, but uh, a lot of people know that they're just not, they really don't know what they're talking about and you can see it in their plans. You know, I have a lot of people come from other coaches like y'all do and you're like, what was this coach even like? I can't even <laughs> I can't even reconcile what this coach is even thinking. But anyways, yeah, yeah it does help a little bit. Right on, for sure. You were saying, Andrew, uh, the, about powerlifting. You you came from powerlifting? No, it was just a powerlifting gym. I never oh. cared about powerlifting. Yeah, but, okay. but but wouldn't you say like that mentality? Like everyone squats, everyone there, everyone benches, everyone does quote unquote the hard stuff. That kind of maybe yeah kind of instilled or imprinted on your mind a little bit and maybe then once you moved to bodybuilding you brought some of those lessons with you well see i was, I was already a bodybuilder before that um, okay. okay so anyways but it was just like the COVID times where i went that was the only gym was a private gym so he was gotcha. able to keep his doors open to, you yeah. know quote unquote um yeah. the training part yes the the motherfuckers they want to train they know how to train and they're the ones, you know, or that's kind of where I gathered, like, hey, I've got a nosebleed. Like, you can go watch some of my leg press videos. I have nosebleed on leg press. It's like a <laughs> long set. And, I, you know, that's cool and stuff like that in a powerlifting gym. Like, that's you, – you people get – so, in a powerlifting gym, a lot of people don't know, it's so niche, it's so tight, it's like a family. Yeah. So, you have to get accepted into that family. Yeah. And so, basically, one day what I did is I went in there and do a back workout. And I always did deadlifts on back day. And – Dude had loaded up like five or six plates. I forgot which one it was. And he, you know, he, he was supposed to be the, you know, the, the king of the gym type of person. And he was struck, like struggled to get it up. You know, it's like, Damn, you know, they're all mad and stuff like that. I was like, Hey, you mind if I jump in? He was like, you want to go down to one plate? And I'm like, no, I'm warm enough. And I ended up doing it for like six, or like, like six plates for like 10 reps. And they all just kind of looked at me and it got real quiet. And, he just went off. and they're like, 
dude, you're strong. And I'm like, well, what do you think? Because I'm always trained in a hoodie and sweatpants. That's just how I, I've always trained. So they really didn't have no idea. And um, anyways, and then from there, I just got kind of, like, you know, get to them. But the only deal about powerlifting is just nutrition. And I, I, no. I, I got into where I was kind of coaching for some of the nutrition. And they're, all their lifts, you know, skyrocketed. Their yep. PR skyrocketed yep. just because nutrition. So I feel like they can benefit so much more from nutrition. But as far as, like, the hardcore mentality – it was a sweatshop. Like during the summer, there was no AC, garage doors open. You're like completely wringing out your shirt, putting on a different shirt or whatever. Um, the hardcore mentality, I think that helped because I was training a commercial gym before that. But I don't know. I've always just had the mentality of if you're going to do it, you might as well just do it, you know, all the way, you know, till, I mean, you're going to squat till you pass out. You catch a nosebleed. It doesn't matter. Like I'll tell somebody before I say, hey, I'm probably going to get a nosebleed, but it's okay. We're going to keep going, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. That's cool. No, hell yeah. Do you guys have anything else for him? No, I'm just excited to see it all go down. And me too. 10 now, days, ten, eleven days, yeah. whatever it is. You know, yeah. you're, you're yeah. going to be there. Andrew? Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah, I, I don't have any guys this year. I, I actually, <laughs> weird story, man. I had three supers that were going to do it, and then um, all three of them bagged out. One, one of them. It, it was an interesting situation. He had a really close relationship with his coach mm-hmm. at the time, but his coach kind of wasn't responding wasn't being as you know like somehow relationships they just kind of they get taken for granted in a sense yeah Yeah, and so we started for a week and he went to tell his coach you know hey this is what's going to happen i'm 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 switching over and we're all friends which is the hard part too and then um his 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 coach really gave him a good sales pitch was to, to a reason to stay with them it was like i'll be on ball i i'm, I'm here for you you know and he, he reached back out to me and i'm like dude i totally understand you kind of have a relationship the same way like maybe me and nate have you mm. know you guys came up together that, that's I totally how me support and my coach that. are it, exactly and i was going to say it's very similar to you and ty you know he's been like i think your only coach right well i've had i had andrew Vu before okay um, we won't we won't get into all that. We can get off that off air if we want to. But like with Ty, like I'll check my weight in the morning. You know, we've already discussed this kinda and he's cool with me making especially on, you know, because normally he can't he doesn't get back to me till like nine or, you know, ten o'clock and I'm already eating my I've already ate my first one, make, getting on to my second meal. So he's cool. i am like, Hey, I, I I'm doing a high day today. So like he like we're kinda like we know You're the process two. so well yeah. and he trusts me enough mm-hmm. to know like He'd be like, yeah, that was the right call. Or, you know, if he'd be like, you know what, let's just run a base. That's cool. You ate that first meal. Let's just go ahead and cut it down to a base today. You know, that's cool or whatever. But, you know, we're on this, we're on the same page, same wavelength. And that's what's really nice is you see a lot of these people jumping around coaches to coaches who don't get the desired outcome. If I would have been mad, you know, at my first national show because I placed top five, but, you know, I didn't <laughs> win and wanted to go to a different coach, you know, we wouldn't have all this, you know, it's not always greener on the other side. I have people that have left right. me and then came back to me, just like I'm sure y'all have. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, listen, this has been freaking awesome, man. And and I have to think just the world of technology we have today because we literally just met this morning, and and now I get to to talk to you here for an hour on the show. Uh, I'm excited to see how this how uh, this turns out, man. And I'm wishing you the best of luck. We know that you have a YouTube channel. I'm going to definitely put that in the description. So, guys, uh, go and follow him over at YouTube. And, and what else do you have? How else can people follow along with what you're doing? Uh, you can follow my Instagram. It's Justin underscore Wyatt24. My coaching page is Addicted Athletics 24 Or you can, uh, you can reach out to me on there. Um, you know, those are the two main sources that I pretty much use. Hell yeah. How about your the, mailing address? Yeah. <laughs> my, uh, mailing Social security <laughs> number. <laughs> I wanted to see if he was so brain dead from being so lean. He'd be like, oh, I live at 27. <laughs> Social security number is 387. Yeah. Yep. yeah you got me on that yeah, one. I, oddly, yeah, your energy just, doesn't uh, seem too bad. No. Yeah. I, I, I really, in, I in, in this people. close. Yeah. yeah usually I'm, people are kind of like, you know, they're slow in speaking and slow in putting their thoughts together, but you seem... You seem pretty quick and energetic, which is oh, it's because he's eating six hundred carbs. He's not suffering. It's because yeah. he's been yeah, trying to condition. Still a level. That means you're not in shape. But even with that condition, there's still a level of of stress there to where it's like we're so close. We have it. We got to make sure that's, that this last that's, part. Of it, that's still the biggest stress. deal for me. It's like hurry up and wait. Huh. Hurry up yeah. and wait. Hurry yeah. up and yeah. wait. It's like if literally the show could have been last week, it would have been perfect. You know, because mm-hmm. this is when you kind of feel it where. Yeah, I may be eating all these high days and stuff like that, but it's doing absolutely nothing to my body. 
Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it is what it is. And I, it could be worse. We could be having to do zero carbs right now, which, you know, I've never had to do a zero carb day. But um, mm-hmm. it's it's stuff that, I you know, you can't take for granted. And then this is the sport that I love. Of course, yeah, the last week, the last two weeks is when it really hit me. And I've definitely felt like crap. But, you know, being able to come on this podcast, you know, it, it kind of, you know, sparks a little bit on you. And, you know, I like talking to y'all because, uh, like I said, I've been watching y'all for years. And this is just awesome opportunity. And I'm just excited to get on stage and hopefully put a package on there that's worthy of uh, everybody's attention. Hell, yeah. Well, we'll be but sure to get this one out before the show, fans. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he does. Doesn't he? Yeah, but you, you at least got three more fans. And I'm quite certain that you've picked up a few more from the from the listeners and the viewers too so we're definitely yeah, pulling for you i don't pay much attention to to shows these days because i have been in it for so long but i'm going to pay attention to see what goes on i'll be pulling for you too me too me december too. 9th december 9th Dallas, right. Texas. very cool well, we'll be sure to get this one out before that then so that everybody else cool. can follow along. And guys, go follow Justin and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Of course, go to bodyberry.com to reach out to Andrew. Mm-hmm. Team Skip to reach out to Skip. You can reach out to me at McNallyDiets at gmail.com. Thank you very much to True Nutrition for all you do to support the shows. Use our code THINK to help support us. Uh, supplementsource.ca for our Canadians. And thank you to everybody from Patreon. Next episode, crew, we need some questions. So comment on the YouTube for questions. And for anybody new here, we'd love to have you follow along with everything we're doing. So be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that stuff for another episode of Blood, Sweat and Gear with Justin Abbott or Justin Wyatt. If you follow him on Instagram, we'll see you soon. Best of luck, Justin. Justin Wyatt, Abbott. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> I figured I'd go both ways. Say Justin Wyatt and Justin Abbott. That way they'd know. People like even my videographer, the first couple of videos he did, he literally put Justin Wyatt. I'm like, you know, my name's Abbott, right? Like, <laughs> I never knew that. I never knew that.